Welcome back, Wealth Giants, to another episode. If you are new to the channel, my name is Ryan. Welcome to the channel. We are going to be talking about it's not about the money. <laughs> I'm just joking, guys. It's always about the money, but it is not, however, about the price of the stock or how many shares you buy. Now, let me explain why, but in order to explain why, I'm going to have to use an analogy, and you guys are going to hate it. Don't click away, though, because trust me, it is worth the analogy, especially if you could use it on your fellow friends who you talk about stocks with all the time, which I know you do because everybody does. Here you got a pair of crappy headphones that I got for free from work. They don't work anymore. I don't even know why I have them. Um, but when I first got them, the sound quality eh, sucked. They thing broke off in the first day you got one still there and you know after the first week you could throw them away then you got a pair of beats okay these are my wife's i kind of hijacked them from her after we got married uh she's had them for about eight years i've had them for about four and <laughs> they're kind of falling apart as you can see like underneath here you know the thing is already falling off this thing's cracked and yeah, but they still sound great. I still use them every day, and that's the point. Now, why is this related to stocks? Well, the, the crappy headphones are your junk stocks, and the good headphones are your great high-grade companies that you would invest in long term. Now, I am a long term investor. I'm not a financial advisor, however, so everything I say here is just for you guys for entertainment, my opinion, so on and so forth. That's the point I try to make. Um, but anyways, these high grade headphones represent high grade stocks, okay? Why are high grade stocks important? Well, those are companies that you put your money in and kind of just forget about really if you really, really want to. Now, I don't recommend doing that, but you could. The junk stocks, however, are those companies where you have to really look into to find those diamonds in the rough, you know, kind of just figure out, okay, this company sucks, this company sucks, and you got one in every 200 that is a gem, okay? And that takes a lot of work to find those. And a lot of newer investors don't understand that and not saying that you are, you know, not understanding that, but you see all these companies like GameStop and AMC and say, wow, this company's going to the moon and making hundreds of percent gains and all that other stuff. And you're like, I got to get into that. This is amazing. I just put my money into one stock. Those kind of events, however, are very, very few and far between. I mean, the big events that happen like that, I could probably count them on two hands in a year. Now last year is a different story just because of the V-shaped recovery that occurred last year, but what I really want to focus on are normal years, okay? Normal years, you don't see those very often. In fact, very few and far between. Now with all the retail investors coming into the market, yes, there is a little bit more volatility, especially since, you know, everybody likes to follow the pack, okay? Everybody sees GameStop go up, everybody puts their money in, it goes up even further. But here's the thing though, for every winner, there are dozens of losers. That was my high school quote in my yearbook, fun fact. But what I really want to point out is people who invested into GameStop, for example, okay, they put their money in, especially when it was reaching around 300, 200, 500, okay, not 500, $400 a share, okay, there was more than just the hedge fund managers that were losing in that, okay? I'm guaranteed there were people who just opened up a Robinhood account and said, I'm going to put $300 into GameStop. I guarantee right now they are down over 60% because they didn't understand the fundamentals of investing and they were just trying to follow the money. Okay, never follow the money, you follow the company. When you're buying into a company, it is an asset. It is a part of something. You are buying a tangible thing. Okay, you can literally go out to a company like Walmart, for example, okay, say you invest in Walmart. You own part of Walmart, you own part of that building. Granted, you can't just take something, but you own some of it, okay? You own a portion of their money, a portion of their revenue, a portion of their income, and things like that. Now, would you rather have a portion of GameStop's revenue, which, by the way, has been decreasing every single year, every single quarter, or do you want to invest in a company like Google that reported positive earnings and beat earnings, okay? Which one? Now, my opinion, long-term thinking, is I want to go with the company that makes a lot of money long term and continually increases. And here's why. You can invest in a company that's a junk stock 
and it will go down in value over time, okay? You can't trust them. You have to constantly look into them. You have to kind of follow them, make sure that they are keeping up with what they say that they're gonna do to increase their value, okay? And pray that they follow through. And there's a good chance that you'll still lose money at the end of the year. 12 months later, you lose money. But the other hand, the high quality company, Google. Okay, I wrote them down. I'll show you screenshots of them. Okay, Google, for example, went up in the last 12 months alone, 40.23%. Tesla, 481.66%. Amazon, 61%. Facebook, 26.9%. Not as good as the others, but you know, pretty good. And Skyworks Solutions, okay? Skyworks Solutions, really great earnings, 50%. Okay, in the last 12 months. Now you might be thinking, Ryan, I don't want to be in it for 12 months. I want to, I want to get my profits now. Well, come to Vegas. That's where I'm from. Go to the casino and put your money on the crabs table or play uh, blackjack or something like that because it's the same thing. It, it really is. You might as well just do that. And as I said, for every winner, there are dozens of losers. And the quote continues by, chances are you're one of, I'm just joking. I'm not gonna be that mean. I'm not that mean at all. I just had to finish the quote. The point is, is you want to invest in good grade companies. And here is the, the moral of the story, okay? It is not about the amount of shares and it's not how much the stock is worth, okay? You can literally buy fractional shares, okay? You could have put $40, $50, $100 into a junk stock and bought, you know, 200 shares or whatever or however many shares that the would be permitted with $100 and possibly lost 10, 20, 40 all your money in that 12-month period of time. Or you could take in your money, put it into Google, Amazon, or something like that, Tesla even, and gained in the, the 12 months, 480% on that $100. That $100, if you put it into Tesla 12 months ago, would be worth $500 versus the uh, company, the junk stock company that you could have made 50% with, so $50, okay? That's the point I'm trying to make, is don't limit yourself by saying, oh, you know, not always in the stock market, bigger numbers means more value, okay? 50 shares of one company does not mean that you are gonna make a ton of money versus the one share you buy in Tesla. When I first bought into Tesla, okay, I only bought one share. The second time I bought into Tesla, I bought two, well, one. And then the third time I bought two, and then the fourth time, Fourth time I bought four, so eight shares total. The stock since split, I have now 40 shares. I sold six of them, I have 35, or 34 still. Okay, I have made a total profit of $30,000 in Tesla with a $2,000 investment. On top of that, I am up over, I'm up almost 2,000% and I've held onto the stock since 2017, 2018, 2018. Okay, 2018, that is, almost three years I've owned these shares and I'm up 2,000%, okay? That's a lot, especially for the stock market, okay? The S&P 500 goes up on average around 7%, seven, okay? And that's normal, obviously. I'm not a normal investor. I expect getting a little higher. Do I expect hitting the jackpot with like GameStop? No, I don't expect that. You could, you can go out and search for those. Just remember that it's like going to the casino here in Vegas betting all your money on the crabs table, hoping you win, but there's a good chance you won't, okay? That's what I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you, you know, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to pick on anybody. I'm just trying to bring you to reality, realizing, you know, there is more to the stock market than just betting your money on a company. You want to build your wealth. You want to set your future up for life. You want to be able to retire one day. You want to be able to live a good life when you can no longer work. If an accident happened today, could you support yourself for forever based off of your investments? Well, you can't with uh, GameStop, but you could with Google, you could with Amazon, you could with all these other big companies, index funds that you could put your money into and make a lot of money, okay? Compounding interest, more money than you will ever see with GameStop, unless you did call options when it was really, really hot in GameStop, and in that case, you're set for life anyway. And But remember, as I said, for every winner, there are dozens of losers. 
We don't want to be one of them. There we go. That's the quote. Anyways, that's what I got for you guys. If you like this video, please smash the like button. Also, on top of that, if you want to see more videos like this and you like my content, you like my personality and all that other great stuff, consider hitting that ugly mug over to my right. Looks just like this one. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.